AOC's dress certainly made a splash on the red carpet and on Twitter, but can it kickstart the conversation around taxing the rich in a meaningful way, one that ends in action? Well, House Democrats have released a tax plan that starts to address just that. As part of the budget reconciliation deal, the House Ways and Means Committee is proposing to raise the top individual tax rate to 39.6%. That applies to people making over $400,000 a year or $450,000 for couples. Raise the top corporate tax rate to 26.5% and raise the capital gains tax rate to 25%. There would also be a 3% surtax for those making over $5 million. It would also double the IRS budget, which right now struggles to do its job with the resources it's given. Republicans like it that way. Some conservative Democrats are already complaining that there aren't any deductions for state and local taxes. Without them, people who work in one state and live in another get hit hard. So with few votes to spare, can Democrats, all Democrats, rally around this tax plan? Who better to ask than a senior member of President Joe Biden's White House Council of Economic Advisers? Earlier, I spoke to Jared Bernstein. Jared Bernstein, thanks so much for joining me on the show today. Let's start with the tax plan uh, from House Democrats. Uh, is the White House on board with what Ways and Means Committee Chair Richard Neal is proposing? Are Democrats across the board on the same page when it comes to budget reconciliation, tax rises, the House, the Senate and the White House? Uh, that's a great question, and it gives me an opportunity to underscore a message that President Biden has been saying since before uh, he became the president. While he was a candidate, he began talking about the importance of injecting some real fairness into this tax code. He consistently uh, tells the American people that there are immensely profitable corporations who simply aren't paying their fair share. And what we're starting to see come out of these reconciliation negotiations uh, are a set of tax policies that not only raise the revenue to offset the cost of these critically important tax cuts for middle class families, investments in child and elder care, investments in, in, in dealing with climate change and in, in infrastructure, electric yes. vehicles, but doing so in a way that is highly progressive and doesn't touch families under $400,000 of income. So does so does the White House support what we're seeing from Richard Neal, the specifics? The specifics are under negotiation, are ironed out back and forth. We're kind of looking at rough drafts of policies that are uh, morphing as we speak. But we certainly uh, uh, are very happy to see the kinds of revenue raisers that were highly progressive and very consistent uh, from what I've seen with both the president's pledge and his insistence okay. on injecting fairness into this tax code. Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was at the Met Gala last night wearing a dress that said tax the rich across the back. I imagine that was a topic of conversation around the White House water cooler. Does the White House support AOC on taxing the rich? I think what the White House supports is uh, certainly something that's consistent with uh, what she and other progressives have been pulling for for a long time, which is to ensure that the most profitable companies in America, in America finally start doing two things. They pay their fair share of their high profitability levels back into the U.S. Treasury, something that we've seen uh, fall you know, precipitously over recent decades, and two, that they stop all offshoring jobs and investment. And the president's tax plans that are now taking shape in these negotiations do both of those. They raise the necessary revenue from households and corporations that are highly wealthy above 400,000. That takes you to the top couple of percent of the income scale. And they change the international tax rules to make sure that our tax code doesn't support offshoring, it supports onshoring of American jobs. But Jared, but Jared, I get it that you are going to raise income tax levels for you know, people earning over 400,000 higher earners. It's a good start, but as the New York Times points out, uh, your plan, the Democrats' tax plan, the Times says, is aimed to go after the merely rich, 
more than the fabulously rich by raising tax rates on income rather than targeting wealth itself. The Jeff Bezoses and Elon Musks of the world don't rely on paychecks. Their wealth comes from stocks, bonds, real estate, etc., which can grow largely untaxed. You're not hitting those guys hard with taxes, are you? There's no wealth tax on the way, even though a recent study found that as of last month, U.S. billionaires' wealth grew by $1.8 trillion during this pandemic. Well, look, I, I, I must say that I disagree in some part with that critique, uh, and I think that uh, it, it requires one to look a bit more closely at what's being proposed. So the president has proposed considerable taxes on capital gains. That's the appreciation of wealth held by, in, the, in, in his proposal, uh, families with incomes over a million dollars. So hitting the very top. And now we, we, we've seen ideas for a 3% surcharge on, uh, this is coming out of the uh, Ways and Means Committee, for incomes above $5 million. The, uh, I also see discussion of an estate tax in the mix. The president has talked about changing rules of uh, 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 something called a step-up basis where uh, inheritors are taxed at the real value of what they inherited, not the uh, uh, much depressed uh, phony value that has historically been the case. So uh, this president has actually put wealth taxes on the table. Now, has he gone as far as some uh, would like? Uh, 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 certainly some progressives have argued otherwise. No. But I would argue that he's hit... <laughs> I, I, there you go. Uh, but I would argue that he... Uh, to, to, argue, uh, to claim that he isn't hitting... Uh, wealth with these taxes is incorrect. No, he is hitting wealth. He's just not hitting the 1.8 trillion that some of our billionaires have made. Let's talk about something else in the tax code. The House bill doesn't uh, repeal the SALT tax cap implemented by the Trump tax law. That law limited state and local tax deductions to $10,000. Uh, a lot of conservative lawmakers from New York and New Jersey, both relatively high tax states, are demanding that it be included in the final bill. Democratic Congressman Josh Gottheimer told NJ.com it's his top priority. No SALT no dice, he said. Where does the White House stand on repealing or increasing the salt tax cap? The tax package that the president has put forth and that our, uh, uh, our tax team at the U.S. Treasury under Janet Yellen has scored uh, did not include uh, that. Um, and now we're into a set of negotiations which always occur when you do tax policy in Washington. I'm not going to negotiate here from this podium, of course, but what I will tell you is that we have gotten farther than I've seen in well over a decade, not just in uh, increasing uh, the revenue flow to the Treasury, but in doing so in a highly progressive way and in doing so in an international way. You know, speaking of Treasury Secretary Yellen, she accomplished something that has everybody uh, just kind of slapping their heads in surprise, which is 130 countries holding hands and agreeing to implement a minimum global tax. So there's lots of different ideas yes. on the table. That salt cap is not one that we led with, but it's certainly uh, one that is uh, going to be part of the negotiation. I'm not going to comment on that negotiation from here right now. It's okay. We'll get you back, Jared, when it's all done and dusted. We'll talk about it then. Uh, one last Before question. We As we all know, none of this happens without the backing of Senators Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, who both said they won't support a $3.5 trillion budget reconciliation bill. Is the president ready to lean on them on that issue, on things like the filibuster too? Rolling Stone magazine is reporting that's what he's prepared to do, that Joe Biden's going to pick up the phone and make some calls. Can you confirm that? Because that would be some good news. Well, first of all, let me tell you uh, that this president has surprised everyone at every step of the way with what he can accomplish legislatively. And by the way, I've seen him do that for 15 years uh, straight now. So that is uh, you know, the, the idea that he's not going to you know, do everything he can to fight for, for this has, uh, has obviously been disproved many times over. But you give me a chance to make a really important economic point that I want to, you know, and, and to tie this conversation together. We've been talking today mostly about the tax side of this reconciliation plan, this $3.5 plan. 
if you that's a gross number that is that's the that's the spend that's the expenditures but from that you have to subtract the pay fors to get the net cost which is what matters to senators who are concerned about deficit implications and the net cost if you look at our tax raisers comes closer to something like zero if you go out uh, uh, to about uh, 15 years according to our scoring and something closer to okay. uh, uh, much smaller numbers if you you know then the 3.5 if you go out five ten years based on the kinds of pay fors that people are coming up with now so be very careful when you're discussing the different senators preferences not to just talk in gross terms but to net out the impact of these pay fors because it gets you to yeah. a much uh, not only a smaller number but a more realistic number when you're talking about the impact on the deficit well I hope you and your boss make those points as passionately to Manchin and Cinema as you've made them to me today. Jared Bernstein, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. My pleasure, Matty.